friends. My name is Melinda Metz, and I'm the Community Relations Coordinator for SourcePoint. Um, you're a one-stop shop for everything on aging. And with us today, we have our brand new Community Education Coordinator, um, Allison Chakra. Welcome, Allison. Hi, thank Hi, you. Allison or Allie? Um, most of my friends call me Allie. Some people call me Allison, so it is completely up to y'all. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, welcome, Allie. Um, I have not had the chance to meet you in person yet, um, but you were introduced to all of us online by our HR manager. And um, what struck me is you're an incredibly impressive person, Allie. Thank you. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about what you were up to before you joined us here at SourcePoint recently? Yeah, of course. So before SourcePoint, I was working full time at Helpline in Delaware, so close partner with SourcePoint. I was their regional outreach coordinator. So with that, I worked a lot with other service providers in Delaware and other surrounding counties to provide the best possible services for any sort of victims of crime. And so along with that, I also was and am still currently a sexual assault advocate with Helpline. I am down to a contingent um, staff position with Helpline, but that is something that I have always been passionate about um, empowering others. And so stuck with that and that actually ties in really well to this current role, um, just shifting my gears of empowerment towards older adults. Um, I also own a home-based bakery, so I do custom cakes, cookies for anything from weddings, graduations, birthdays, stuff like that. So I stay pretty busy. Um, I have definitely been considered a workaholic in the past, but gives me purpose, and I'm just excited to be with SourcePoint. It's been going really well so far. Well, thank you so much for joining us, for even applying for the position. We're so lucky to have you. Um, I in, were you in, in, you were in the Air Force as well. I was, yes, yes. I spent several years in the Air Force Reserves, and as soon as that time was up, I evaluated what I wanted with my future and decided it was time to take a step back. But the things that I've learned as far as leadership and followership from – the Air Force has been transferred over to every aspect of my life and just really helped in so many aspects. That's absolutely just inspiring as well. Thank you so much for that. Um, and seniors are, you're not just working with us, but seniors are sort of a passion for you too. Um, you have a family connection to, um, to working with seniors. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So my in-laws, the Shackrofts, own uh, Melbourne Village, which is a retirement village in Worthington, Ohio. Um, so it is wonderful going there. Um, my mother-in-law and father-in-law actually live in an apartment like upstairs above the village, so permanently ingrained in that culture. And so me and my husband spend many days, many hours there with that uh, population of people, um, whether it's for dinners, we it's really cool because the village will get together and have like big Christmas celebrations or other random get togethers that really gets that community um, and gives that community feel. So um, it's just something like it's a permanent part of my life and I, I love it because they energize me. They really do the population. Um, and so when I saw this position open at source point, I was like, I, I have to at least try, and I was so fortunate that it did work out. And we're fortunate as well to have you. So thank you again. Um, so you're with us because you will be out and about um, working with our uh, community education programming and bringing our brand new source point on the go van out into the community for different events and educational opportunities. So tell me a little bit about what your plans are right now for that. Mm -hmm. So it's really awesome because the community education program has this team of people working together. Um, so there's so many different ideas and it's not just one person implementing all of these ideas, it's everyone working together. But 
far, as far as the go van, um, I am really excited to be able to get out in it and help with our falls prevention program. Um, a matter of balance, that's going to be a big um, focus area for me personally. And we know how important that it is to prevent falls in older adults and how dangerous those can be. And so if you start to think, you know, enough people aren't getting this education, how do we increase those numbers? Being able to take it to them is just so tremendous. And once, you know, it's deemed safe for us to be out and providing these educational purposes, um, whether that be falls prevention or any of the other awesome programs that SourcePoint has to offer, um, once we're able to get out in the community and get those going, I think that's just going to amplify everything good that SourcePoint is already doing. I think so too. And so one of the, the offerings that you're, you want to talk with our audience about today is um, Seniors Against Scams. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that and who should think about tuning in. Yeah. Yeah, so Seniors Against Scams, I was really excited about this personally because it ties in my background with victim services. And the thing with victim services is there's no one size fits all when it comes to a victim. It literally can happen to anyone. Um, and unfortunately, when it comes to scams, seniors are targeted because they are vulnerable population. So that is why I'm really important to, it's really important to me to bring this to SourcePoint. And what it is, it's an hour-long free training as a part of the national partnership with Walmart and the National Council on Aging. Um, and the, the whole goal behind it, the premise is to empower older adults to recognize when they're being targeted, how they're being targeted, and how to protect, protect themselves against financial fraud. And like I was saying, anyone can be a victim and we I think a big thing to bring awareness is just to talk about it and really try to eliminate the stigma that comes along with being a victim to financial fraud because it can be embarrassing to talk about if that's something that you fall victim to and just trying to reduce that stigma and understanding it really can happen to anyone anywhere at any point in their life and just knowing that there are resources available out there to assist you. And so I, and I'm thinking not only seniors themselves would be a good, um, you know, someone who should tune in, but also maybe someone that has loved ones who are older adults. Um, you don't know what information is out there. It's very easy for people to get a phone list or an email list, you know, of people whose interests um, align with uh, what would be thought of as senior interests. Mm -hmm. And that's how they target people. Um, and, you know, they're, they're not just doing it randomly. So there's a reason why they're targeting people over 65. Um, and, uh, and it's just very, very sad. I think people's eyes would really be opened in terms of how brazen some people are and that there's actually nothing to be embarrassed about if you are a victim. What is most important is to get help quickly. Oh, yes. And, and so you're going to teach people how to access that help once they've become a victim as well, correct? Yes, yes, absolutely. So a big part of this training is not just identifying what types of scams are out there, um, but who can you look to as a resource to get help and how can you get out of this situation? No one deserves to be in this situation, but the good thing about this training is it can provide those resources, whether it's, you know, seeking family or friend support or an organization like SourcePoint or ultimately reporting it to the police or adult protective services. And um, so you'll be walking through the different types because there are actually quite a few types. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's moved way beyond the grandma scam, right? Yep. Where someone calls pretending to be a grandson or granddaughter trying mm -hmm. to get money on the phone. There are lots of different ways that people are trying to scam seniors. Oh, yes. Um, and yes, so many of us have heard about the grandparent scam, and that is still, unfortunately, very prevalent in today's society. But also, you know, if you think the older population, 
they are learning and signing up for Medicare. So that might be, that's a wonderful opportunity for someone to come in and say, hey, I have all the answers. I just need your social security number. And as someone who may not know that that could lead to, people are trusting. That's what it comes down to is in, in human nature, it's our, our first instinct is to trust people. And people are really good at acting and seeming trustworthy, unfortunately. And so if someone is needing assistance, whether it's Medicare or Medicaid, or maybe their roof needs fixed, that's another one. You know, if someone is coming knocking to your door, wanting to give you information on a roof, ask them to call back at another time. And that's something we'll go back into more details. Don't ever sign up for something if you didn't seek the information regarding that particular service that they're trying to provide. Take the time, take a step back, evaluate the service, whether it's through the Better Business Bureau or just seeking other opinions. Just always remember to take a step back and really evaluate those that are coming at you with their service. If you don't seek them first, unfortunately, we have to be very cautious. And just like you said, with how opportunistic the the perpetrators are who are out there. I mean, we saw a rash of scams even after the stimulus checks came out, and that's very recent. So they're they're on top of what's happening and can make things make sense. So trust your gut, too, for sure. Um, we were even almost the victim of a scam at SourcePoint. And I just had to trust my gut. So we, have, we do a health and wellness event every year, a very large health fair. Um, and it's one of the largest in the region. And so one of the aspects of that is that we have free health screenings. And so we had someone contact us offering to do free genetic testing and genetic screening. And it just didn't sound right, you know, the things that this person was offering. They didn't have a proper email. They didn't have any marketing materials to share with me. They had no website to share with me other than one that just had a homepage and no other pages associated Mm -hmm. with it. And um, so I could find no good information out about this and just started Googling different things. And lo and behold, it was indeed a scam where Mm -hmm. people were trying to get individuals um, Medicaid, Medicare numbers, um, which are unique to them so that they could bill them falsely for um, for genetic screening that they would not actually receive. Mm -hmm. So um, anyone can be a victim. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely. Thank Um, you for sharing that. I think it's so important for us to share our personal experiences so people understand it's not just them. They aren't alone. And every concern is valid and deserves to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. And so you will also be teaching not just seniors how to advocate for themselves, but also loved ones for what to look out for and um, what to do if someone's been the victim of financial abuse in this way. Mm -hmm. Correct in the class? Yes, absolutely. That's a really good thing about this program is it's not just for the senior population. Literally anyone could benefit from taking this because, well, first off, anyone could be a victim of any sort of financial scam, fraud, anything like that. But then also you might be better able to see or sense if a scam is happening to someone else as an outsider. So one of the things that this training goes over is what to look for. Um, if you think that financial fraud could potentially be an issue in the senior's life and whether that's if someone's in charge of their bank account, if they're seeing new and unusual charges in their account or sudden confusion or fear um, that isn't normal for that older adult um, and just knowing that you as an outsider can make that report to Adult Protective Services too. It doesn't have to be that person that is personally being scammed. How worried do you think someone should be generally about being the victim of one of these um, financial schemes? I I wouldn't use the word worried because I, I think that can compromise the person's life. I think that it's something that we need to be educated about and just knowing that if this does happen to us it's not our fault you know we did nothing to ask for this no one ever does ask to be a victim in any sort of capacity but just really understanding that it is prevalent and it could happen to you 
but knowing that you are much better off to deal with an unfortunate situation like this if you have the education and the resources to assist you with it. Okay. And how can someone access this class? Mm -hmm. um, so we are going to be offering it in the future. There will be more information coming soon through SourcePoint. As of right now, we may be offering it online depending on how things are opening up in the world. Like many, we at SourcePoint are going with the flow. Um, but if you have any questions or comments or concerns about this class in the future, um, my information will be given and available and I will be able to point you in the direction. And there also is a website um, about Seniors Against Scams where you can find printouts and basic information. And once the training is offered, SourcePoint will be announcing that to the, the community. Through all of our channels, just like Facebook. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, any final words before we sign off here? I would just say, um, you know, take the power back as much as you can. And the first, the best way to do that is just to educate and prepare yourself. And then also, it's not just for yourself, it's for the loved ones around you. Because sometimes they may not mentally be able to recognize when something like this is happening or it's just so much easier as an outsider to see and just being in that person's corner and better able to assist them with this unfortunate event. It happens. It's never going to fully go away, unfortunately, but this type of training such as Seniors Against Scams can greatly reduce your risk of falling victim. That's wonderful. So if you would like um, further information about this empowerment training and others, um, go ahead and go to our website, mysourcepoint.org, or um, just stay tuned on Facebook and our other social media channels. We'll, we post things very regularly, and we have new classes getting added all of the time. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with us today, and have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you.